everybody, welcome or welcome back to B&B &B Anime for a very special extra bonus Kurokono Basuke Part 2 episode. Super exciting. I am Blue today. I am here with Brad, who is apparently, you, you said you're really hot. You were playing COD earlier and overheated. What's going on with that? So right before we sat down to record this, I've been playing COD for about three hours straight now. Mm -hmm. And I live with my grandmother, so... Obviously, older people, they have a tendency to get cold really easy. Mm -hmm. So although it's not cold enough for me to have the heat on, she has the heat on. Mm -hmm. So it got hot as hell in here. So I had to cut the fan on because, you know, hot. Yeah, I have uh, two different types of heating on myself, though. Blanket and your heating. Well, I have the house heating on, and then I have a small electric plug-in radiator that sits in my office that is plugged in. Mmm. Yeah. You're in You're in that level of cold right now. I'm in that level of cold. I'm not quite used to the winter yet. It always takes, like, a month or so for when the cold comes in to really get acclimatized mm -hmm. to it, before then you're, like, outside in t-shirt when it's, like, minus 10 because the sun's out, you know? Mm-hmm. Right now I'm still in that phase where... I'm not, I'm still in like summer body and I'm just cold all the time when I'm outside or inside or it's gloomy. I get cold. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get better as it goes. But yeah, it's, it's still in that time where I, I, everything, I think it normally takes, for me, it probably takes normally around till Christmas, but I feel mm -hmm. like quite a lot of that is also the atmosphere. You know, you want to be cold at Christmas. I don't know, man. I, I just like to be cool. Mm-hmm. All year round, I hate being cold, but I hate being hot more. Mm -hmm. Like, today, it was pretty chilly outside today for, you know, us Southerners. Mm -hmm. But also, while at work, I had the warehouse door open because I've been absolutely killing myself today at work to make sure I got everything that I needed to get done, done. Mm -hmm. So I was absolutely drenched. I was messaging Blue, like, halfway through my work shift. I was like... I'm drenched, I'm exhausted, I'm cold, but also burning up. I don't get it. What's going on? What's going on? Too many feelings. I don't understand. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm a person that always runs cold, so chances are if you see me, I'm going to be overdressed for the weather. Yeah, and you see, I like my house cold. Mm. Yeah, if I went to your place, I would be freezing. I'd be wrapped up in... So many layers. Poor blue. Yeah. And I live in one of the And yet I would be dying. World. Yeah, I would be dying if I went over to y'all's place. Yeah. Just, that wouldn't work. No. Well, my parents tend to keep the place pretty cold, but I am always in blankets and fuzzy socks and multiple layers all the time. And then whenever they leave the place, I'm there at the thermostat, <laughs> chucking up that heating. So you say pretty cold. But my idea of a cool house and your idea of a pretty cold house are probably still two different things, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think you keep your house at around 17 degrees Celsius, right? Like, that's your I think it's like 17 and a preference. half because that's like 65 degrees. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, we tend to be a couple more degrees warmer than that, but I like it, like, warm. <laughs> Which is why I have the radiator and um, small fireplace. I have, like, a electric fireplace that's in my bedroom as well. Mm. I have, like, small little heaters all around the house. The basement, I live in the basement, and it's cold in general. Like, all of the heat doesn't stay here. It always, I mean, heat rises, so it's always on the top floor. So the basement's mm -hmm. really cold. So whatever the the upstairs is, the basement's mm -hmm. at least like three degrees colder. Oh, poor Blue. Yeah. Always, always being trapped in cold. And it is. So I, that's why I have like 50 blankets everywhere. Yes. So today with the Kuroko, we're going to be getting into episode 14, where we left off of the first season, where we left off last time. Our last episode came out on Sunday, so if you haven't already checked that out, make sure that you go listen to that part first. Shall we Shall we get into episode 14? Before we get into episode 14, last Kuroko no Basuke episode, you asked me if I had gotten into any uh, anime or manga, and I said no, and you were mad at me, but that was a lie, and I okay. didn't realize it was a lie until today. Because mm -hmm. my mom actually got me some manga for my birthday, and I'd just been kind of casually reading it, and it hadn't registered in my head that it was a manga, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. 
if it were anybody else, I would probably have some harsh things to say. Because if it's <laughs> you, I will give you a pass. Good, okay, uh, cool, I'll take the pass. I'm not afraid of taking a pass on that, because I know it's stupid. But <laughs> <laughs> I have, in fact, been reading a manga, and I cannot, for the life of me, remember the name of it. I just tried to Google it to see if I could find it, but I, it's upstairs. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a collection of volumes. So it's like, you know, where they have like three volumes in a chunky book as opposed to you buying the, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like my Black Edition Death Notes. Mm -hmm. It's one of those. And it's about ping pong. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. The, the drawing style is so unique and ugly. It's really ugly. You have not seen ugly manga until you read Mob Psycho. It rings a bell. I think I've probably seen it on some forums or something. But yeah, I've been I've been reading this this ping pong manga and I am really confused. That's how I'm gonna put that. I'm really confused. I've been I'm eight chapters in and I don't really know what's happening. It's mm -hmm. the I think I think I've just read it with my ADHD brain on like Max because I'm fixated on this one thing that doesn't really make much sense. Like I don't think it's that integral to the story, but I've for some reason become really fixated on it. And so there's like your main character, right? He's got a best friend. Main character is OP at ping pong, right? That's how it works. OP at ping pong. Mm -hmm. His best friend isn't very good. His best friend is super competitive and loves playing ping pong. Main character doesn't have any competitive spirit and actually doesn't really have much of a will to live in general. They're on a, like, a ping pong team and they're going up against a team, very much like Kuroko, that uh, is, like, a regional winner, national winner, five, ten years running. I don't know. I don't really remember. Like I said, I've been reading it very casually, so <laughs> names and stuff haven't stuck in my brain yet. I'm going to read through it all the way once, and then I'm going to go through and, like, actually read it a second time, because consider this very casual reading. And and then some guy from China comes over because he's like a, they've recruited him, you know, and he's really good. But the main character has a thing about his his blood tasting like metal. And it, I don't, I don't know why I'm so fixated on that. But it's about ping pong. So the fuck? I, I think uh, in the beginning, when they were children, there was a scene where some bullies were picking on his friend. And he was saying that the hero was going to, like, show up, but the hero never did. And then he was like, well, that kind of, like, was the thing that lost his will to live because he was like, well, no hero ever came. You know what I mean? But, like, that was the the pinnacle bit. It was in the first first chapter, so it's, it's not even, like, a spoiler or anything. Mm -hmm. Not that anybody knows what I'm talking about because I can't remember the name of it. But if you know, then you know. <laughs> But yeah, he then had this like saying about his blood. I and I I don't remember it enough to be able to like understand what's going on and maybe I just have to read more. But yeah, I I that's probably why when you were like, "Have you been reading any anime or manga?" I was like, "No." <laughs> no. No, I haven't because in my head it's just confusion right now. Mhm. Mm Let's jump into uh the anime what am I talking about? We'll jump into Kuroko. We're at episode 14. If you wish to hear about our previous episodes, I did say this earlier. We've already recorded them. It was dropped on Sunday, so you can go listen to that episode first. That episode also includes all of the background on this anime, studio who did it, other projects that studio has done, director, that kinds of stuff, M manga or content. I think it, this is actually based on a light novel series originally, so light novel content is also like knowledge stuff. All included on that, as well as some fun news that's not just about the anime world, but also about the video game world. So if you want to hear about that, check out Sunday's episode. We don't normally do news and background on midweek episodes, but we will again on this Sunday's coming episode for All Out. So if you're wanting the most up-to-date news, you're going to have to wait a few days because it's not out yet. That's how up-to-date it is. I guess you could say we're going all out on the next one. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so episode 14. Episode 14! You look just like him. This is my favorite episode. Without a doubt, 100%. I just could not be any happier with this episode. This introduced mm -hmm. my favorite character in the whole show. Yep. 
Blue decided to hit me with a gif of this character today, and that was my absolute mood. Yep. 100%. Uh, I could not be any more pleased with this episode. This is this is the best episode. This includes the best character. This character stays a character throughout the rest of the season, which I'm so happy about. I'm so happy that they didn't, like, get rid of him at the end of the episode, you know? Mm-hmm. Freaking love this. Let's jump into it. After the game, the boys go to get somewhere to eat when they bump into Kisei and Mirima and who warns Kagami. Mirima warns Kagami about the next of the five that he's going to face, Aomine. I I can never say his name. Aomine? Aomine. He has the same style as Kagami, but Kuroko doesn't like him. So basically he's an aggressive... I I would equate him to a centre forward. I don't know basketball positions, but in my head he's like... A centre forward, he's aggressive, he's making plays. Power forward. Power forward. Whatever the fuck that is. Sounds like a centre forward to me. Sure, why not? <laughs> yep. Okay. But yeah, he's got this super aggressive play style, and it sounds like Aomine has the same kind of style as him, based on what Midorima is telling him. But Kuroko just don't like him. They don't get on, they don't mix well, they don't mesh. Kuroko, when they're walking out of the restaurant, spots a thing. He goes and investigates said thing and picks up a dog. The dog happens to look exactly like Kuroko. Kuroko Mark II or number two. He's so cute. You know what's disappointing? What? He didn't get the number two jersey. No. Oh my God, he should have. I am drastically let down with the fact that they gave him number 16. Mm. This is very upsetting. I just think it's so cute how they gave him a jersey. And they got it specially made. Mm Mm-hmm. So here's here's the real question, though. Mm-hmm. Who does number two stay with? Because that's never addressed. It's never addressed. It's kind of like he just stays in the gym. Like, that's where you see him. But I assume he's with Kuroko. That's what I want to assume. Mm. But what would make it even better is if he was staying with Kaguya. Kagami? Kagami, that's right. Kagami. Yeah, I know, I agree. Because Kagami is the only one that lives alone. Or at least the only one that's established at this point that lives alone. Not only that... But Kagami, as we find out in this episode, hates dogs. He's so scared of He's movies. terrified. And uh, it's the tiniest, fluffiest little dog. It's so cute. Okay, let's jump back into it. Kagami is feeling super restless because he can't train with his team due to the overuse of his legs from jumping during the game. So he has got an injured leg. It's not doing well because he was jumping on it. Um, and, and he's torn all the muscles in, well, not torn all the muscles, but like strained all the muscles in it and he's not doing well. And so he's on rest, but the Miracle's old manager and Aomine's current manager show up at their practice claiming to be Kuroko's girlfriend, Momoyi. And <laughs> she is a character. This is where, uh, I remember last episode I was talking about how those anime stereotypes are very strong throughout this anime. For instance, the hair colors, the underdog story of our team the ev- like the main character being smaller and weaker than everyone else but has secret potential all of those kinds of stereotypes this is where another huge stereotype steps in with momoi having huge boobs <laughs> and calling and pink out hair. and pink hair and calling out our brunette coach for having not even a b cup or barely a b i think that's what she says mm-hmm um, and and it's very amusing. And they have a breast off. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what happens. And it's I stupid. I am humored at the just the thought of a breast off. <laughs> just that phrasing. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, but that's, uh, that's basically what happens, is they have, they have that typical fight in anime. It's a good, it's a good fight. We all enjoy it. I think it's it's very amusing, so long as we get our abs when we're watching free and stuff as well. So, you know, sure, why not? <laughs> Aomine challenges Kagami outside to a game of 1v1, but Kagami is obviously not feeling well. He's on leg rest. He still plays because he's an idiot and basically tells Kagami that he's making Kuroko weak because a shadow is only as strong as the light that casts it. And Kuroko is Kagami's shadow. Kuroko promises Momoi that he's going to beat Amine to change him back to the happy player he used to be when he first joined the Gen of Miracles. Episode 15, don't make me laugh. Kagami can't practice due to straining himself playing Amine. Kuroko tells him about Amine and uh, the fact that he loved basketball more than anyone in middle school, but he was used to the 
Uh, but he was the first of the miracles to blossom. He beat everyone easily, and soon all of his opponents didn't even try, and basketball wasn't even fun for him anymore. He didn't have anyone that he could seriously play against, he didn't have a rival, he was just beating everyone left, right, and centre, and it just sucked all of the fun out of it, despite the fact that he used to be the biggest basketball fan out of anyone in in the team. And he was the one who... Oh, we'll find that out later. Uh, I'm skipping ahead of myself. Arr. He started skipping practice and his mood worsened and he just kind of became an arrogant prick. After the others also got good, things only got worse for him because of course then the team got really good. He still didn't have any rivals to play against and then they were thrashing opponents even worse than they were when it was just him that was like a miracle player. And people would go into the court and give up after seconds of playing against him and it just sucked all of the fun out of the game. Kagami heals and the championship tournament begins. He's not really fully healed, but he's not in pain anymore. And the championship tournament begins and Seren's with... And the championship tournament... Oh my god, I can't speak. Kagami heals mostly and the championship tournament begins them as Seren's first opponent. However, Aomine is late to the game with his non-caring attitude. He doesn't really give a shit. But he says that he's going to make up for it in the second half so he'll just play in second half and the other members can do whatever they want in the first half. But it turns out that the other members aren't anything to shake a stick at because the rest of the team was like, well, we'll try and get a lead up before Amine comes back. But the actual team that they're playing against was a formidable, a formidable opponent to start with, even without him playing. And they end up not doing well at all against them. Because even though Aomene is monstrously better than them. I hope that makes sense. I didn't really explain that very well. Yes. <laughs> Episode 16. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that amuses me. The boys are struggling against uh, the academy. And even without Aomene there. Momoi has meticulously studied Seren. And not only that, she know not only the, does she know all of their data, she's also predicted how they're going to grow and change. She's kind of like a seventh member of the Miracles. If you're going to count Kuroko as a secret member of the Miracles, you can kind of count her as a secret member because she was a manager back when they were in middle school and she, her brain is intense. Not only can she gather all of this data from all of her opponents, but she can analyze it and predict how they're going to improve, not just throughout their training from the last piece of data that she collected, say she collected them in the last tournament last year, she can then predict how they're going to improve throughout that year. And then on top of that, she can also predict how they're going to improve in a game. So she's really like intense on the miracle brain thing. You can tell she's good because she has pink hair. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She is definitely one of the generation of miracles. Mm -hmm. They're behind and Kagami's legs just can't keep up. Coach pulls him, benches him, and tapes his legs. And by the time she's done, there's a 10-point difference and only a minute left in the second quarter. Not only that, Amine has finally shown up. So they're looking pretty intense. They're, they're 10 points behind. The crowd is against them as well. And that's a huge thing that they don't actually really talk about throughout this anime. But from someone who's played sports, and I'm sure you agree, Brad, and from other sports animes and live sports and stuff, the atmosphere and a crowd has a huge impact on your gameplay. And her pulling Kagami out of the game got a really poor reaction from the audience, from the crowd, because mm -hmm. they just saw her pulling their best player off of the court and then didn't really put two and two together that she was pulling him because he was injured. So they just thought that she was pulling their best player just because. Mm -hmm. Which obviously didn't do well for team spirit. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. Like, crowds play a huge part in momentum. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was that was definitely not good on her part to do that. Yeah. Episode 17. You're all ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Is that Harry Potter? This class ridiculous. is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that just slipped in my brain. Okay, good. Cool. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. Potter. Wait till my father hears about this. The tangents are real tonight. They are. <laughs> I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed. Or worse, expelled. Oh my god. Oh my god. Everything's so nice here. I don't, want to so nice here. I don't have to pay tuition. I get all my phone taken care of. I get room and board. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Both Kagami and Aomine block each other's shots within the final few seconds of the second quarter. A team's break and Aomine gets serious. He's... He admits that he actually underestimated Kag uh, Kagami 
and Kuroko and actually tries to warm up rather than just like sitting on the bench chilling because that's kind of what he normally does due to his shitty attitude. Kuroko is benched because his effectiveness is wearing off and Amine's team have no teamwork. Amine's team have no teamwork, relying on individual skill as opposed to team plays. So basically, kind of the exact same thing as to what Kuroko dealt with back in middle school. They're all really, really good individual players with all really, really good specific talents. I mean, obviously being the best, the ace of the team. But because of that, they're self-reliant and they don't have cohesive teamwork. But they do really well regardless because they don't need to. They don't need to rely on each other when they're so good in their own individual areas. Make sense? Yes. The third quarter begins and Kagami can't keep up with Amine, but his passion and raw talent fire up Amine to where he's playing seriously. Or at least what we think is him playing seriously. Episode 18. No! No matter what the team do, they can't touch Amine, and things are looking... But things are kind of looking okay when they finally sub, Kuro, sub Kuroko back in, but Amine is forced... Uh, is, but Amine is a force to be reckoned with, because he used to be Kuroko's light, and he knows him better than anyone. Soon, Coach notices that Kagami's actually limping, and can tell that he's been favouring his injured leg with his other leg, and because of that, he's been taking too much strain on his other leg. She subs him out, now completely, and Kuroko refuses to give up. But the rest of the team follow suit in in solidarity as they, without their ace, suffer a crushing defeat of 112 to just 55. Big defeat. Our first defeat as a team. Sad face. Kuroko's sad. Kagami's injured. Not good. So sad. Big sad. Honestly, the first defeat should have come sooner, in my opinion. Yeah. Where would you have had them lose? A friendly? The first match against Kise. Yeah. Because yeah, because that doesn't matter. Instead have of real having them win by literally two points, why not just have them lose just to like solidify how tough the generation of miracles are? Mm-hmm. But that's just that's just my opinion. I kind of agree. If they had them lose to Kise, but lose by a small margin, like the two points, it would be enough still for Kise to gain respect for Kagami. And to leave Kuroko alone and not continue pursuing him to recruit him for the team. And it would be enough to build a connection between them. But it also doesn't have any lasting effects on any kind of tournament. And then makes more sense for what happens in the last few episodes. Oh yeah, because it definitely seems like Kisei and Kuroko are going to become better friends down the line. Mm Mm-hmm. Or at least that's my opinion, Mm -hmm. and just me being an idiot and trying to foreshadow shit that I usually have a bad track record of doing. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, so I'm just going to agree, because I know what happens, obviously. (laughs) Disappointment. Anyway, but yeah, I uh, think that definitely could have led for at least a better storyline development. Mm. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Episode 19, onto a new challenge. After their loss, they have to play two more games. Because it's part of the tournament, like you play three teams, play in a group of four, and then it's kind of like the World Cup, play in a group of four, you get points, go through based on the amount of wins that you have. It's kind of like that. So if they'd won the other two games, they could have had a shot of going through. But because they are now, they've benched Kagami, he can't play, he's injured. And Kuroko is in a huge slump because Amine was a, a dick for the things that he said during the game that really shook Kuroko because basically saying, you're not good enough. You're never going to be good enough. You're not going to ever be able to get Kagami to where you want him. There's a reason why I left you behind and you're going to get left behind by him as well, basically, is what he was saying. Dick words. And uh, it really shook Kuroko's confidence. Not just in the fact that he found himself pretty useless throughout the game, but also from someone that he respected and played with and is a team member, having those words said to him really kind of put him into a huge slump. Not to mention that in the locker room, Kagami also then says to Kuroko something along the lines of, I think we should put some distance between us ourselves right now, or something like that, or I don't think that, that we can win... It's something like, I don't think we can win relying on each other as we are now, or something. Like, that's what he says. And Kuroko Mm. takes it the way that uh, Amine just basically said that he's going to get left behind. Because, honestly, that's fresh in his brain, right? Yep. Yeah. I didn't really explain that very well. If you want to word it better, then. (laughs) Because I think you got it there at the end. It was more along the lines of, I have to get better. Otherwise, we won't be able to get better. 
Yeah, it was something along those lines, but Kuroko didn't take it like that. Because later on, he has to clarify with with the coach. No, uh, with captain. With the captain of the team. Mm. Because at this point, he just thinks that Kagami was like, I don't want you anymore. You're not good enough. But mm. that's not what he said, because the way that he worded it made it seem a little bit more vague. And But that's the point that Kagami was trying to get across, was yeah. I need to work harder. Mm. Kuroko's interpretation of it, though, was, you're not good enough for me, which is sad. Poor self-esteem. Same. Mm. They set their sights on their next tournament, even so. Next tournament is the Winter Cup. It's actually a bigger tournament than the tournament they were in now, but it's quite a ways away, and they have the entire summer to get through to train for it before preliminaries of that start. And as they get back to the club, Tepi, who uh, was in hospital after surgery and rehab, comes back. Turns out he's the old ace of the club, and... He's a bit odd and always has something up his sleeve. He calls Kuroko out on setting limits for himself and later challenges Kagami to the starting position. The starting position. Basically what he says to Kuroko is, dude, like you're the only one who says that you can only pass. So why is it that that's what you're still stuck on? And Kuroko's like, but that's all I can do. And he's like, yeah, but who told you that's all you can do? You did. So maybe we'll see some developments of them in the future. <laughs> 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 Dinner. We'll see. Episode 20. I don't want it to be. Kagami plays Teppi in a game of 1v1 and beats him, but he was playing in his school shoes the whole time. Kagami leaves the gym and then everyone's like, Teppi, why were you going easy on him? He's like, what do you mean? And everyone's like, look at your feet. And he's playing in school shoes rather than basketball shoes. He's like, oh, and they're like, you did that on purpose, right? He's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> totally. All the other senpais from the other schools actually remember him and respect him. They wonder what happened to him and why he didn't show up for the championship game that they end up losing by like triple their score. Remember back in the earlier episodes when they were playing in uh, the finals of the prelims of regionals? Yep. Mm -hmm. when they were talking about how the fact that those senpais have lost by triple their score, those games that they lost by triple their score, the reason why they lost was because their ace hadn't actually been there and everyone's kind of wondering where he went and why he wasn't at those three games. Reason being, obviously, most likely has something to do with the fact that he was in hospital, had surgery, and was in rehab. So he wouldn't have just... Yeah, they don't actually go into detail about that, but it's pretty easy to put the two together. Their captain talks to Kuroko after practice, where their captain talks to Kuroko after a practice game where only the first years played. And he tells him that Kagami had asked for space from Kuroko because he wants to get stronger to be able to support him properly. This is where Kuroko finds out that what he said in the locker room was actually meant as a, I want to improve myself, as opposed to a, I'm going to ditch you. Kuroko goes to find Kagami and tells him that he also wants to get stronger to be able to beat the Generation of Miracles with everyone by finding a new style of basketball, just like Tepi predicted and set up. Because he's a little schemer. Little schemer. He and the coach work well together. They do. That's actually one thing they didn't mention in this is, is the coach asked him why he didn't become captain and he said that he that the captain that they that he asked because he's the one who actually set up the basketball team like he created it he said the captain that is the captain is better in like on court circumstances with morale and and keeping everyone happy and and like he's good at the spirit and he's actually much better he prefers to do the behind the scenes kind of scheming stuff and he doesn't feel like he can do that by being held reliable kind of you know he needs to have that kind of freedom of just being a player yeah agreed mm -hmm. episode 21 let's get started the group progress towards their training for the winter cup they prepare for a summer camp coach does her best to learn to cook with the help of the gentlemanliness of some of the guys and uh kagami actually trying to teach her he lives this alone, was another so one of cook. my favorite episodes <laughs> yeah just because the whole cooking training montage, I was very humored. It was very funny. Them finding out eventually the, f the reason why her food doesn't taste good is because she <laughs> packs it with vitamins and vitamin C pills and protein powder and just like shoves it <laughs> in the food. Uh, it, was, it was great. <laughs> It's really funny. And soon they're off to the beach because obviously where else are you going to go for a training camp? Midorima's school is also training there? <gasps> Shock horror. Coincidence. Kagami is a training beast. Coach only asked him to run laps for one team and he ended up running them on the beach for two. <gasps> Kuroko is also really determined to do better. So we're starting to see him actively trying to do things that previously he'd written off. Or, you know, just taking one shot every now and then. That's kind of, yeah, what you see. Just him like, eh. 
Honestly, only though, in he... anime is doing that character development. <laughs> yep. Episode 22, I'll win even if it kills me. As the group training camp wraps up, Kagami questions why he spent the whole time running on the beach. Running on the beach, do 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 do. <laughs> I get the reference. <laughs> the coach gets him to jump to show how he, his newly acquired strength. Basically, she was getting him to run in the sand all the time to build up those legs so that he can be able to jump reliably, consistently throughout a game and not put a lot of strain on his legs like he did previously in the past games. He's, he's getting up those base stats. Hitting some rats in a back alley with a baseball bat. We're back to this again, are we? Yeah, we he's got to boost his XP, dude. Level up. You know, I really want to sit you down and get you to play Dark Souls. Just yeah. so you can see what it's like to try to really grind your way through a game. I used to play RuneScape back in the day. Uh, the ultimate grind. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I remember my old RuneScape password from when I was like seven. I am intrigued as to what that would be. I'm... I'm trying to think. It must have been one that my parents set up for me. Just reset the password, man. I'm trying to think if I know the email address, though. <laughs> Could you imagine if your mom or dad were still getting RuneScape emails? <laughs> still I know I used to play it back in England, so I was under the age of 10. Because I started playing Mabinogi when I first came over here. You need to you need to find that login info and to. tell us what all your stats are. I, I, it's going to be, it's going to be like, it's probably going to be like woodcutting maxed. Because I'm seven. What else am I going to do? Fish? <laughs> Fish. I'm, oh, God, that brings back memories. Why did you say that? I just got hit with memories from fishing. Oh, stupid side quests. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a thing. Nostalgia train. Didn't right? think I was going to think about that today. You're welcome. Mm. Yeah. Kagami's German ability has leveled up. Mirarima plays 1v1 with him to help him realize the fact that the, la the lack of of left-handed ball handling skills that he has is really his downfall because even though he can probably beat anyone in the air with his mad hops, he is limited to basically dunking because of when he jumps off of his right foot, which is his most powerful foot, he's limited to just dunking with his left. So is that right? Jumping right foot, left hand? Yeah, I think that's right. Yes. And because of that, he's always going to beat him in the air, even though he can outjump him, because they know what's coming. So mm -hmm. now he has an idea of what he needs to work on and train on, and he's feeling pretty confident about his training regime, and he's got a new boost of energy. So while he's doing some late-night training, Kuroko comes up and starts running beside him on the beach, sneaks up on him, which is rare these days. He doesn't normally sneak up on Kagami anymore. He sneaks up on him and comes up with an idea as well that we don't get to hear so that's that's a thing for season two the other team team members vow to find a specialty because they're kind of just generalists i mean a couple of them have a couple little quirks but none of them have like a big specialty like kuroko and kagami and they want to become really integral members of the team as well and they've seen how hard kagami and kuroko have been working over the past few days specifically kagami has been working really hard and they want to boost what they're able to do so they can be proper supportive members of the team. Kuroko's obviously been working through a lot mentally, and they want to be proper to support them. They want to be a good team, and they don't want to be left behind by Kagami and Kuroko. The tournament they were eliminated from is continuing, and actually the finals are being held in the same region that they're currently in. So they decide to go and watch Kisei versus Aumine. Episode 22.5. This is the OVA, the Crunchyroll, slipped in between episode 22 and 23. This OVA actually came out after the series by nearly a year, I think, or like at least six months. And it does kind of spoil a little bit, in my opinion, because it shows characters that aren't actually introduced originally until it later. It shows the other two Generation of Miracles, doesn't it? It shows the last two members of the Generation of Miracles, yeah. So basically what it is, is it's a history of Kisei in middle school, joining the basketball team, him learning about Kuroko's powers, him learning, meeting Aumine, who's actually the person who kind of got him into playing basketball, and him having this like rivalry between the two of them. And it's a really good setup for episode 23, so I understand why Crunchyroll slotted it in, and it was actually named episode 22.5 as an OVA, so it is supposed to go in this chronological order, but if you haven't seen the series before, it does introduce the last two members 
of the Generation of Miracles before you meet them in the show without the OVA. And it takes away some of the mystery of them. So I'm glad you didn't watch it. Yeah, I should have went back and watched it after the fact. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I should have went back and watched it for this episode. But I kind of got distracted. Got distracted. I let it go. Um, But yeah, it's just basically a a background about Kisei and the rest of the guys and meeting the last two miracles, Murasaki Bara and Akashi. And Akashi actually ends up claiming in this... I'm going to spoil this for you. It's not really a spoiler. Well, it kind of is. This is Yeah. I, I say this is a spoiler, but it also isn't a big enough spoiler to really affect the story. But to me, I don't know. I'll tell you what it is, and then you can kind of decide. Because you would know better or not if it is a spoiler. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Nah, go ahead. Okay. Akashi claims that he was the one to discover Kuroko's hidden power, even though kind of up until this point, you're led to believe that it was Aimine. Akashi's- Interesting. Yeah, he's the redheaded one that plays chess. Hmm. He's the big brain of the group. He's the big brain of the group, so- Or second big brain. Second big brain. Manager's kind of first big brain. She's first big brain. But she's a different kind of big brain. That's all I'm going to tell you. Episode 23, I'm not mature, me either. <laughs> Same. Yeah, who needs to be mature? We don't need maturity around here. Kisei, Omi- Aimee, Kisei versus Omine kicks off, sorry, football, shoots off, bounce, what do you call, how do you start a basketball game? It Tip off? Tip, it tips off. <laughs> tips <laughs> off. <laughs> With both of them starting completely seriously. Kisei used to be Omine's, uh, used to beg Omine for 1v1s all through middle school. And he knows his playstyle ridiculously well. Kisei's team managed to take the first quarter. Even the other members of the team, even the other members of the team are doing better than Momoi's data suggested. However, this just excites Amine and he steps up his game for the second quarter. Amine knows what Kisei is up to because he's a copycat and has no moves no moves of his own has no moves of his own. I swear I'm not having a stroke. On the bench, Kisei asks his coach to let him try the thing. I want to do the thing. But yeah, so basically, Kisei's like a huge copycat. That's what he does. That's his miracle, is he can look at something, he learns it real quick, and he's able to replicate it. Amine then, of course, knows exactly what he's going to do because he doesn't come up with anything original. So Amine can just, like, predict what he's going to do based on his vast knowledge of basketball because he was the biggest fan of basketball out of anyone in the group. So his knowledge basis overpowers Kisei's abilities. And Kisei has the ability to copy pretty much anyone except for people that are physically more capable than him. So, like, he can copy things that, like, NBA players do, but he might not be able to copy them to the same ability that an NBA player can do because he's still a high school kid. But anyone else that's part of their high school team or anyone that's, like, equal or of lesser physical ability than him... He's able to copy. Makes sense? Everyone except for Kuroko's misdirection ability. Yeah. And to this point, he even didn't think that he could copy Almine. Yes. Episode 25. Don't get the wrong idea. Kisei attempts to copy Almine. It takes a while, but he manages to do so and gets the point difference to just nine points. Everyone is super concerned for Almine, who fumbles the ball and has managed to rack up four out of five fouls. But he doesn't give up and blocks Kisei's dunk. Episode 25, Our Basketball. The fourth quarter begins and Kisei and Aumine seem to be pretty equal. It takes all of the other members' effort just to attempt to keep up with them. However, the score isn't closing. Yeah, however, the score isn't closing. It's just increasing evenly. So whenever like Kisei scores and Aumine scores and then Kisei scores and then Aumine scores. And Kisei is copying the exact shot that Aumine takes. So whenever he does, Kisei just does the exact replica on the other side of the court. <clears throat> however, Kisei is putting in a lot of of strain on his body attempting to copy Amine. With one minute left and eight point difference, Kisei needs to make a basket to turn the tide of the game. But Amine sees through his play and blocks his shot because what he did was he relied on his team member because he was going to go for the dunk himself and then he swished it behind him and passed it to his team member because he couldn't see, he knew that Amine like knew where he was going. And Amine was able to predict that and block that team member's shot because he knew that the one thing that he wouldn't do was pass it to a team member, and therefore, if he saw all of his options were blocked, Kisei only had that option left, 
And because that was the one thing that he wouldn't do, and he was trying to trump Omine up, and because he was copying, it ended up being the only option. And so he knew, right? I didn't explain that very Yes. Well. I'm not explaining things today. Nah, you're doing a fine job. Yeah. Omine's team wins, and in the locker room, Omine's captain tells the others that who are concerned. They're like, oh my god, he nearly lost today. What's he even with him? Like, maybe he's not as good as we thought. And he tells them that there's nothing to be worried about because he didn't even play at full power today and that he's only ever seen him play at full power once and he can only do it for a short period of time because it takes so much strain on his body. And so we're left with this feeling of Kise nearly beat Amine and we're thinking, oh my god, like, dude, is like, what did Kise do? What was his training regime between the first friendly where he was beaten by Kuroko and Kagami? Now he nearly beat Amine and then we find out, oh, just kidding, Amine wasn't even playing at full power. Curious, right? That's just, that's horrifying to think about that Amine can still go beyond what we've already seen, mm-hmm. but it wouldn't make for a good anime villain if he didn't. Mm-hmm. Now that the tournament's over, they're walking through the halls, and Kuroko, who ended up going to watch the game, I don't know if I mentioned that, that their team went to go watch the game because they were in the area, Kuroko spots Murasaki Bara, who is one of the last members of the Miracles in the tournament hallway. Kagami asks after the two remaining miracles, and him and Kuroko vow again to beat them with their basketball. And that is how we end the first season. So, thoughts, feels, opinions? Seven and a half. Yeah? Still feel like I'm being a bit generous, because the OPs and ED sucked and the art style pissed me off. (laughs) But just those last few episodes got me extremely hyped, so I can... I can kind of look past a little bit of it. I'm intrigued to see where the series is going to go from here. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, yeah, there's that art style just really pisses me off. (laughs) Yeah, I understand. I understand. I'm kind of with you on the seven and a half thing. I was debating between a seven and a seven and a half. I genuinely really, 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 really enjoy this anime. I know I'm being really harsh on it. I've been harsh on the last few that we've reviewed. I was really harsh on Free as well, and that's one of my favorite animes. Reason being is because, yeah, things like music isn't great. The animation style, like, I noticed the lines on it, and I know that that's a conscious decision, and it's our opinion that we don't like it, but it is still that we don't like it, so, I mean, that's just our opinion. Obviously, if you have a different one, that's fine. We're not going to get mad at you for it. Um, how dare you? Uh, <laughs> there are a couple moments where I, I hated that intro bit, how they repeated that every single time. That really mm. pissed me off. I, uh, yeah, I think there's some, I really like the humor that's throughout the show. That's a huge bonus for me, is is the humor. I think it's great. I like how ridiculous the basketball is. I like how they make it super easy to follow for someone who doesn't know anything about basketball. I do kind of wish they explained the rules of basketball a little bit more. I feel like in Q or free, we kind of get more, not necessarily free, in Q, I feel like you get more, or um, Diamond No Ace, they explain the game a little bit more. And I feel like that that would be really annoying, though, to people who know the game. But for me, I would have found it beneficial. At least if they'd done it, I mean, it, like, even if it had been in, like, little bits here or there, like, if they explained the fouling system yeah. whenever they were getting fouls. Yeah. Basketball's not a hard sport to comprehend. No. In fact, it's incredibly easy to figure out and piece together except for the fouling the fouling is where shit gets confusing so they could have at least broken that down a little bit yeah yeah because like i don't know what qualifies as a charge and what qualifies as just running like just dribbling and what qualifies as a block and then what's like not as what's bad you know i don't i don't really get the what specifically makes one bad versus not bad yes so yeah i feel like they could have done a little bit of explaining with that and, I, yeah, I don't feel like either they could have, like, packed it all in on the first episode and just gotten it all out of the way, or if they just trickled in a little bit here and there, maybe have one of the freshmen on the team have never played basketball before. Would have been super easy to incorporate that, just to explain the rules. Or... Yeah, that would have been. Or how cute would it have been if it was, like, Kuroko or, like, Kagami explaining to number two the rules. Yes. That would, that be would so have been cute. That would have been adorable. Yeah, I'd have liked that. But yeah, so from my perspective as someone who doesn't know basketball, I did wish that maybe they explained it a little bit more, but I also can see how if you knew the sport, then that would have been super annoying. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's one of those things that if you're going to watch an anime about sport, you probably have some sort of prior knowledge about that sport going into it. Yeah. 
And At least that's probably their mindset on it. I feel because like. they're there to tell a story. They don't. They shouldn't necessarily have to explain the rules. Mm-hmm. But then again, that's just my thoughts on it. Yeah, like I'm not mad at it. I'm not detracting any points because they didn't. I'm just saying, in my preference, it would have been nice because again, I don't know basketball. But yeah, I think if I did know a lot about basketball and then I was watching one and they spent like 20 minutes explaining the rules, I'd be really annoyed and wouldn't watch. You know, so I do get it from yeah. both sides. But yeah, like if. After number two came into play, if they would have, like, before the game or before the setup happened for, like, all the fouling with Almine in the last game Mm -hmm. or whatever, I would have accepted that. But even then, Kagami went through a bunch of fouls in a previous episode, like, earlier to Almine's. So I feel like, I don't know. I don't know how they could have done it to have explained it. I wouldn't have even mind if just having, like, a... OVA episode dropped where they just sat down and explained it all, you know? I'm cool that'd with that. That had to be like a preview episode to the actual anime yeah. itself. Yeah, that would have been fine with me. But, you know, just personal preference. Yeah. So what else is there to talk about? Predictions. I want to hear yours. I've obviously seen the rest of the show, so I can't really speak on them. But I want to know what yours are. They're going to go to the Winter Cup. Mm-hmm. They're going to make it to the later rounds where they'll definitely play against the rest of the Generation of Miracles. Okay. They may even, because of their new basketball, make it to the finals and play Almine, but they're still going to get absolutely fucking trounced. Okay, and... Although, they do have one more training camp left. They so do, in that's, the mountains. Mm-hmm. So I definitely look forward to that. I want to see Kuroko and Pink-Haired Chick go on a date. Oh, yeah. Okay, predictions about Kuroko's next strategy. What's he going to do? He can pass. But quicker. But quicker. Okay. And also he might be able to make one deciding shot. Okay. He can only make one shot per game. Because again, in anime, that counts as character development. Character development. Okay, cool. And what do you think the two specialties of the remaining miracles are? Because we've got a copycat, we've got a aggressor, and we've got a person that can shoot three point three pointers wherever he wants around the court what do you think the two specialties of the last two are i think one's going to be incredibly quick okay the purple haired one that was snacking on a bunch of candy going into the locker room Mm -hmm. in the last episode i feel like that's going to be like a really quick one but they need sugar to be able to go that's why they had a like fucking hilarious amount of food in their arms okay and what about then the redhead is going to be able to predict everything beforehand on the court. On the court. Because he's smart and tactical. Okay, cool. Interesting. Because honestly, if you have all five of those on the on a basketball court, I could see why they'd be called the Generation of Miracles, because that's fucking OP as hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, oh, Teppy! What do you think about? Uh, what do you? What do you think? He he was he was the ace of the team. He was the one that everyone's scared of. Other teams know about him. Even the the kings, the miracles, like the the three king schools. What do you think about him? I don't know enough about him to give thoughts yet, mm-hmm. because he's he acts a lot dumber than he actually is. Mm-hmm. Like he's incredibly, he's obviously incredibly intelligent. He just acts dumb. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he's just really airheaded and he should be a natural blonde. I don't know. <laughs> He and Becky would get along great. Oh, yeah. They'd have a good time. But I'm interested to see what he, what kind of plays he's looking to make later on in the show. Cool. Because I feel like he's going to play more of a pivotal role in the second season. I'm just unsure what that role is. Although I think he's going to be there to help further Kuroko and Kagami's relationship. Mm-hmm. Cute. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm I'm pleased with those responses, and I'm excited for you to watch the second season so you can determine whether or not you were correct. Anyways, we've done our predictions. Well, you've done your predictions, because I already know what's going to happen, so I can't predict. We've done our opinions on the anime and the music and the, and the animation and, and the... the did, is there a... T- a dubbed version of Kurokoro Basuke? Yes, it is dubbed. I just refuse to watch the dub. Okay. I didn't know if it was dubbed and I didn't know if you watched the dubbed. I've only seen the subbed because I tend to only watch subbed. So, yeah, you know me. I default to subbed. Okay, let's wrap this bitch up. So, if you like the other voice on the end of this podcast, Blue, you can find her 
streaming occasionally. She's on hiatus at the moment, mm-hmm. but you can find her at twitch.tv forward slash blue lavender Monday through Saturday, except for Wednesdays and Thursdays, because that's whenever we do this thing that you're listening to now. Yeah. You can also find her on Instagram and Twitter at blue lavender STM. And she also has a YouTube and TikTok where she uploads art videos occasionally at Blue Lavender. Yeah, it's been a while since I posted on pretty much anything because I'm bad at everything. But, you know, that's what I get. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. Brad, he's the dude <laughs> that's over there. His That's his name. His name's Brad. And he's my friend. And if you like him, then you can find out more about him on his Twitch channel at Brad Carter Gaming. He also have have he also has an Instagram account, Brad Carter Gaming, where you can put a face to the name if you want to know who he is, face to the voice, and watch some gaming content from him because he is streaming more regularly than I am and he is posting stuff as well. He also runs our social media, which is super cool. I appreciate that he does that because I am not good at it, as you can probably tell by the lack of my own personal social media. He does our Twitter and Instagram, where you can see fun meme posts. That's great. And you can also see us whenever we, like, get, you can get the, the notification drop things where we post new episodes on those socials, which is great, because then you can know if you didn't get the alert on your phone or whatever. We post it. You can listen to the new episodes. Sometimes we drop midweek episodes, like we did this time, and it's unexpected. So you might want to check the Instagram, just in case. Surprise! Surprise! We can also, you can also, you can also, not we can. Well, I suppose we can as well. Together. The royal we. That just means me. (laughs) ADHD. You can go on YouTube and watch, or listen, I suppose, to all of our previous episodes, our archive episodes, at BNB Anime on there as well. BNB Anime on everything. So if you are trying to find us there, it's just BNB Anime and we'll show up on most stuff. We're also on all your regular listening platforms, your Spotify, your Apple Play, your all of those, you know the ones. And on our website, we have some information about us. We have some information about, (laughs) here's some information about some art stuff that we've been doing, about our voice acting stuff, about, like, just us. You can find out some stuff about us from friends of the podcast, stuff like that. You want to go on the website, you can find that all about. And all of our previous episodes are archived on there as well. I don't think I said episodes there. All of our previous episodes are archived on there as well. So you can go back and listen to our very first episode where we're big old cringy babies. But like I said previously, this is just for fun. We don't know what we're talking about. We're just two weirdos who love anime. So let us know what you think of our opinions in the comments section or in those DMs on social media because we'd love to hear your opinion because we're sure that your opinion is probably more well-rounded than ours as we are the least professional that you will ever get at actually being able to review anime. So let us know what you actually think. Let us know what you rank, Kurokono Basuke. Let us know if you've seen the entire set or you stopped after one season, if you dropped it, if you watched like everything except the movies. I don't know. Let us know. Have you ever played basketball in your life? I barely have. I think I've touched a basketball like 10 times in my life. I want to know these things. I'm nosy, okay? Don't judge. You with the basketball scares me. I'm just going to throw that out there. Me with anything that moves scares me. Yeah, honestly, I'm afraid to play tennis with you. Mm-hmm. Mainly mainly for my safety. I don't want to have the ball hit at me. Uh, I can lend you my snowboarding helmet if you want. I'm just going to hide behind the net, just occasionally stick my racket up just to hit it. <laughs> oh, my elbow! That's twice in one recording! Mate! Uh... You need to be more careful. I need to have smaller elbows. Not, No, I don't. I need to have... <laughs> <laughs> I need to have elbows that don't break. It's on my bad arm as well. I'm like, one end of the ulna is broken, so I'm going to break the other end as well. That's fun. So, are you wearing your brace? I am wearing my brace. I'm good. Well, I will say, though, you hitting your elbow is quite humorous. Ugh. Ugh. It, it really tickles my funny bone. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Those puns are so bad that I'm going to need a hand for the rest of my life. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. I just can't can't quite put my finger on what's wrong with them, though. Anyways, that's everything from us. So, thank you all so much for listening, Blue, and I greatly appreciate it. Sunday, you will have a brand new episode of All Out. I forget what sort of sport it is, but Rugby. you know what? We're going to roll with it anyway. Rugby? Rugby. Ah... Uh, 
We have that to look forward to this Sunday. Yeah. But outside of that, we'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.